Welcome to another edition of Conservation Ag Update, brought to you by BioTill Cover Crops and Saddle Butte Ag. Technology editor Noah Newman here for the next 10 minutes. We got a jam-packed broadcast. Now, the big story right now, of course, is the drought. Much of the U.S. experiencing abnormally dry conditions. Taking a look at the drought monitor map here, doesn't look too good as of June 8th. You see those maroon colors in parts of Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. Those represent exceptional drought conditions with the potential for long-term impacts. Now, most of the Corn Belt is abnormally dry with some areas experiencing moderate drought. Independent research agronomist Jim Studi checks in from a no-till farm in southeastern Wisconsin where the crop is holding up okay despite getting less than an inch of rain in May. And so moisture stress is really on the mind of the farmer. And why I wanted to come to this location is we've got this dead residue here and the residue is doing a really good job of preventing evaporation. So we're holding whatever kind of um, moisture is in the ground now. And if we get rain, hopefully it's gonna help with the, uh, with the infiltration. But you can see the crop looks really good for the fact it really hasn't had significant rain since planting and uh, we just hope we get some. But it's just one of the additional benefits to the cover crop um, besides the nitrogen. Yeah, similar story in Eastern Iowa at Ryan Gibbs Farm where they've gotten even less rain over the past month. He's been no-tilling for about five years and tells our Michaela Paulkner that his decision to start using cover crops is really paying off in these dry conditions. We've had roughly two tenths, maybe three tenths of an inch of rain in the last 35 days, but the cover crop has just really protected the soil. I mean, look at that. We're not even an inch deep and we're hitting moisture on this. And that's underneath of this residue. And this is like beach sand. It's real sandy ground. But that's the power of our cover crop and the no-till, preserving our moisture. Great perspective from Brian and Jim there. Speaking of cover crops, McCain Vogel standing by with today's cover crop connection. McCain, take it away. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here, Assistant Editor for Cover Crop Strategies. Planting cover crops during a drought can be a challenge. If not managed properly, they could affect soil moisture and take a toll on your cash crop. A farmer posted this picture in the Everything Cover Crops Facebook group saying, cover crops killed my corn crop because of extreme drought. The post received over 100 comments from other growers trying to offer advice on how he could have managed the cover crop differently to avoid significant damage to his corn crop. Penn State Extension weed specialist John Wallace offers some advice on how to manage cover crops when you're not getting enough rain. We planted uh, soybeans on the same date uh, about two weeks ago and you can see that uh, soybeans are up uh, and have a true leaf uh, in the in the standard termination uh, treatment but are just really cracking and starting to emerge in the planting green treatment and i attribute this difference in early season growth of soybeans to soil moisture dynamics um, so we killed this cover crop at the end of april um, and that following week we got about three inches of rain and then we have not had um, really any measurable level of rain for about three to four weeks now so we're really quite dry for may and for planting conditions uh, this season and so um, because we allowed that cover crop to grow uh, we gain some biomass production, but it also probably uh, created a soil moisture deficit as it continued to pull that soil moisture out and we planted in the much drier conditions in the planting green treatment. So that's one factor is being uh, willing to kind of adaptively manage that cover crop depending on those um, uh, weather conditions and making sure that you're planting uh, into really good fit uh, soils. And if you're looking for more advice on cover crops, join the Facebook group, Everything Cover Crops, or head to CoverCropStrategies.com. Back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. We put together a list of resources for you to help navigate the drought on NoTillFarmer.com. Definitely recommend checking it out. Turning our attention to strip till now, in my hands, hot off the printer, we have results from the 10th annual strip till benchmark study. So I thought it would be fun to share some of the numbers with Purdue University strip till expert, Tony Venn live on Zoom so we can get his instant unscripted reaction. Here's some highlights from our conversation. Check it out. Average strip till yields 207 for corn and 61 for soybeans. 
both ahead of U.S. averages and also ahead of no-till counterparts. So I, I'm, I bet you're not surprised by that. Not at all. So those are those numbers are right in line with where I think strip till producers are on average. Um, even if you assume there was no advantage in terms of earlier planting, uh, my experience is that we're we're gaining at least five, maybe ten bushels on corn from strip till. Survey respondents strip tilled an average of 933 acres of corn and 586 acres of soybean. That's the highest soybean total in the 10 year history of the survey. So maybe more people are catching on to the advantages of strip tilling soybeans. Yes, and I think that's a good thing. It's also come about though with a uh, sort of a pulling back a retrenchment of narrow row soybean production in the Midwest. Now, whether that's always a good idea or not, um, that's that's still up for debate. All right, cover crops, 61% seeded cover crops and strip tilled fields. That's pretty consistent with recent surveys, but eight points higher than the first survey we did in 2015. So what's your take on that? More strip tillers using cover crops. I think it speaks to the fact that uh, dedicated strip till producers are soil health conscious, more so than those that rely on conventional tillage. Catch the full 30 minute conversation on striptillfarmer.com. This week's Farmer Feature spotlights a 50 year tradition of conservation practices in the northwest corner of the Buckeye State. Ottawa, Ohio no-tiller and strip-tiller Jeff Dooling follows in the footsteps of his dad, Bob, who started no-tilling and cover cropping in the 70s. Jeff likes to think outside of the box. He's very creative. He uses this custom 17-row toolbar to seed cover crops in between strips while side-dressing his corn at the same time. And that's not the only cover crop trick this sixth-generation farmer has up his sleeve. On my cover crops, usually, you know, every field's different. I don't know where, which, what time frame we're going to be putting it on could rain too much, but there are certain cover crops that don't work in certain times of year. So like sunflowers, you don't want to be putting that out in the fall. Radishes, not out in the fall. That's more of a early summer product. So I buy them in pellets, like crimson clover, my rape, dwarf essic rape, sunflower, my radishes, my rye, my annual rye in bags. And then the day or a week before I get in that plan, then we use our own, this is our feed grinder we used to grind cattle feed for. We don't grind our own cattle feed anymore. But if you take the grinder, the, the, bang, the grinding unit out, or don't even run it, and it's just a big blender. So you got a blender, you got, we got scales, we got an auger. Very creative stuff there from Jeff Dooling. Let's wrap things up now with our photo of the week. It comes to us from No-Till Farmers 2023 Conservation Ag Operator Fellow and No-Till Innovator, Lauren Steinlocky in northeastern Iowa. It's a picture of Lauren with an Honest Work Premium Lager and Upper Iowa Common Dark Cream Ale. Now these are both brewed with corn from the late Dave Brandt's farm in Carroll, Ohio. How about that? This is part of Pulpit Rock Brewery's Dreaming of Field Days program featuring seven different beers brewed with local crops. Just another great way to honor the legend, David Brandt. Story ideas, photos, videos, I would love to see them. Send them my way at the email address here at the bottom of your screen in Newman at lesspub.com. That'll do it for this edition of Conservation Ag Update. Until next time, for the latest news and features, head to notillfarmer.com. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.